about this group? Where did this come from? How do we put this on? What, what type of group is this called? Sulfonic. Yeah, this is a sulfon group. This came from that sulfonation reaction, right? This comes from the sulfonation reaction. Now remember that we learned what the Lewis structure looks like for a sulfonic acid like this. Let me redraw the Lewis structure here. Here's the Lewis structure. So this indicates that we're going to be electron donating or withdrawing. Withdrawing because you can go both ways. That's right. Was that what you guys said before? I thought maybe you said donating, but maybe I misheard. Yeah. So electron withdrawing by resonance. Again, we can put it in a similar argument. The oxygen is more electronegative than the sulfur. So the oxygen tends to pull the pi bond towards itself. And again, there's a resonance structure that puts an extra positive charge here. And I think you notice that we can also have this oxygen pull the electrons towards itself. So there's another resonance structure where this pi bond moves toward this oxygen, pulling electrons out of the benzene ring. And also, because all these elements are so electronegative, there's also induction effects. So if you resonance and induction, this is electron withdrawing. actually a full positive charge on this nitrogen, which makes the benzene unhappy to have a positive charge so close to it. And again, we could draw resonance like this that pulls even more electrons out of the benzene ring. What's the name of this substituent? Nitro. Yes, yeah, so this nitro is definitely electron withdrawing. Good. About this. Donating because it has low pairs to move down. Push them. That's right. Now, so is that a resonance or an induction argument? Resonance. Yes. Yeah. By induction, is this electron donating or withdrawing? Withdrawing, but yeah. um, resonance always feeds induction. Yeah. Not always, but usually. Yeah. So by induction, this would be electron withdrawing because the nitrogen is electronegative. But through resonance, it should be electron donating. So let's actually draw what that resonance structure would look like here. The best way to draw that would be like this. Notice that basically we were enabled to completely take the positive charge out of the benzene ring and move it all the way up here. Well, that's what nature likes, spreading charges out. Nature likes if you can spread charges out. So this definitely shows that by the electron donating resonance structures, we're able to spread that positive charge out. So through resonance, this was electron donating. This is so hard for some students because last term we would mainly have thought of this as electron withdrawing because we didn't think about resonance so much. But here the resonance is more important than the induction effect. What's the name of this type of functional group? Amine. An amine. That's right. Now, why are amine nitrogens activators while nitro nitrogens? Amine nitrogens are activators while nitro nitrogens are deactivators. Because nitro has a plus charge and has to be. That's a good argument. This nitrogen it has no formal charge and it has a lone pair. But we've seen that the nitro nitrogen has a positive formal charge and no lone pairs. That's why I encourage you to learn the Lewis structure for the nitro group. The most important thing is that it doesn't have any lone pairs and it has a positive charge. So it behaves totally differently from this amine group. Incidentally, um, you're not going to do much nomenclature, but you should know the common name for this molecule is aniline. That's a, a name that you're probably, you might be expected to know. Uh, a, a benzene with one nitrogen on it is called aniline. Um, 
Just a quick question about gnome creature for benzene in general. Mm -hmm. In the book, they when we did the problem set, we didn't like read it, but we in two questions they did it two different ways. Like in one of the questions, it had a benzene with a deuterium on it and a methyl group, and it made the deuterium have the higher priority number. Like it was one deuterium, two methyl, and someone told us that it was because um, you do it by alphabetical order for benzenes, but then we saw it later, and it, they, it said that like, um, like carboxylic acids, be um, esters, which be like other things. Right. Like we're not sure, is it by alphabetical order or like well, importance? What matters is whether the, um, the functional group is getting a suffix or not. So this would be basically just called benzoic acid. <clears throat> so then we would start the numbering like this, and it would be what? Two deuterium benzoic acid. Because by definition, this is number one. So here it has nothing to do with alphabetical order, because there's only one prefix anyway. But how would we name this? Well, this is fluoro. You're right. But see, that goes against like everything they taught us again already. Like fluorine should have a higher priority. Chloro, fluoro, benzene. So now, in alphabetical order, the chlorine would be number one, and this would be number two. So it would be one fluoro, two fluoro. Why do we have to use alphabetical order here, and we don't use alphabetical order here? Well, here we have two prefixes. <clears throat> well, when you're deciding the priority between prefixes, you use alphabetical order. But this, sulfur, but, but this acid group is not being named as a prefix. It just gets named as like a new suffix, so there's no need for alphabetical order. I think that's the answer to your question. Yeah, that, that it is, but it just like is frustrating because they've always taught us like F is higher than CL. Oh, they have. Not for benzenes, but like for other nomenclature. When I got it. You're confusing R and S priorities yeah, with IUPAC nomenclature. Oh, it's not. Yeah. So there's two um, totally different sets of priorities. It's when you're assigning R and S and you're assigning the priorities one, two, three, and four. That's based on atomic number. When you're doing R and S and you're assigning the 1, 2, and 3, and 4, that's based on atomic number. That's simply a completely different system for deciding the numbering of the parent chain. That's done in alphabetical order. So those are just two completely different systems that shouldn't be confused. We're not trying to assign R and S here, so we're not using atomic number. Yeah, but numbers. usually, like, if we have an ethyl, or, well, never mind, that doesn't count, but, like, wouldn't it, you would put the chlorine first in the name, but wouldn't it have the number 2 if it was, like, a normal alpha? I don't think so. I think that the numbering would also be chosen um, if, if, if there's a... Generally speaking, you want to choose the numbers to put things with the lowest possible numbers. Um, but uh, if, if there's a tie between two numbering systems, then you should choose to give the, um, the thing that comes first in alphabetical order the lowest why, number. Why would that be a tie is what I'm saying. Well, Now, your top priority is to do the numbering that gives you the, the, the lowest possible numbering. So in this case, should we start our numbering from the left or the right? We start our numbering from the, the left, so that gives this the lowest possible number. If we started our numbering, so this way our lowest, our, our lowest number is a 1. If we had started the numbering from the left, the lowest number would have been a 2. It would have been, instead of having 1 and 2, we would have 2 and 3. So in this case, the alphabetical order has nothing to do with the numbering. In this case, the alphabetical order has nothing to do with the numbering. It's clear that it's better to start from the right to give a 1 and a 2 rather than a 2 and a 3. But in this case, it doesn't matter whether you start, um, whether you number from the right or the left, you can have a 1 and a 3 either way. You can have a 1 and a 3 either way. So this is the one case where now you rely on the alphabetical order. Yeah, so in this case, you would have a 1 and a 2 either way. So you rely on the alphabetical order to decide who gets the lower number. But in that one, we didn't rely on that. 
Thank you, because I messed up. Uh, a little mess up can make a big difference. Yeah, so I, I didn't present this one because I made a mistake up here. But uh, hopefully now we can see, uh, in this case, the numbering is based on the, giving the lowest possible numbers. So we don't need to use alphabetical order. But in this case, numbering from either the left or the right would give one and three numbers. So here we do use alphabetical order to decide who gets the number one. Not, not all instructors really care all that much about that. Some instructors are picky about the alphabetical order and some are not. So, OK. Um, in this case, we're going to get the numbers 1 and 2, no matter which way we number. So here we have to use alphabetical order to say, if better to give the number 1 to the chlorine. 